Hey, so we just left off with some example problems. Um, take a look at these problems here. Pause the video, look at your work, compare it to this work. If you got any of them wrong or you didn't really know how to start your plan of attack, then you can watch the other video that I made entitled Example Problems Worked Out, okay? Um, we had the same plan of attack every single time when we were trying to solve these. We always drew the picture first. I gave you the picture here, here, and here. The picture for part um, example 3b ended up on the other page, but that's always going to be your plan of attack. When you're solving normal distribution problems, you're going to draw a picture first. Now let's talk about z-scores. <clears throat> so in a normal distribution, right, you have some mean and some standard deviation. He's in normal distribution. In the standard normal distribution, he just has a special mean of zero and he has a standard deviation of one. And in the standard normal distribution, a z-score represents an x value's distance from the mean. So let's say you had a z-score of one he is one standard deviation away from the mean. Well, he would be negative because he's below the mean. Sorry. But if you had a z-score of 1, he's positive because he's above the mean. So z-scores below the mean are negative. Z-scores above the mean are positive. And this is why we love the standard normal distribution curve because his z-scores are super easy to interpret. So um, in the standard normal distribution curve, right, there are these tables that um, – I remember my stats, sorry, professor used to make us use, even though we had our calculators, we weren't allowed to use our calculators, we had to look at the tables, but I thought that it really helped me get like a good understanding of what I was actually doing, right? So in this side, we have the negative z-scores, in this side, we have the positive z-scores, right? These are corresponding to z-scores that are below the mean, so they're negative. These are corresponding to z-scores that are above the mean, so they're positive. And basically statisticians like crunched these numbers and found that in the standard normal distribution curve, a z-score of let's say negative one always corresponded, like this is the hundredths column, a z-score of negative one always corresponded to an area under the curve to the left of 0.1587. So they did all these cool number crunches so that way they could figure out these like specific probabilities to the left of the curve given a certain z-score. So because this is super useful information, if we ever have an unknown theta or an unknown um, mean when we are trying to do a problem, we can always use the fact that the z-scores spit out a specific area to the left of the curve in the normal distribution, and we can turn a score from a normal distribution into a score in the standard normal distribution and find its corresponding area. This sounds like a lot of mumbo jumbo, but it's pretty much like you have an unknown theta or you have an unknown mean, you can use the formula z is equal to x minus the mean over the standard deviation, where x is the x value or the data point that you're looking at. Mu is the mean, and theta is the standard deviation. So um, pretty much let's look at a problem, and I'll show you how this works. Example four. Find the mean weight of a group of people that are normally distributed that have a standard deviation of 7 and 0 0.32 is the probability to the left of the curve when we are looking at a score of 68 kilograms. Okay, so we illustrated the picture for you here. You got 68 kilograms. The area to the left of that guy is 0.32. They gave it to you as a percent, but we know that it's really looking like this. Okay. So he's a regular old normal distribution curve. So he doesn't have a mean of zero and he doesn't have a standard deviation of one. He has an unknown mean. He has a standard deviation of seven. So what we're going to want to do is standardize this area to the left of the curve of 0 0.32, turn him into a z-score, and then we can use it to find the unknown mean. So we're going to start with our formula. We've got z is equal to x minus the mean over the standard deviation. Z is going to come from our standard normal distribution curve, okay? We're going to use inverse norm to find the corresponding Z-score for an area of 0 0.32 to the left of the um, Z-score. So we've got 
an uh, area of 0 0.32, we've got a mean of 0, and we've got a standard deviation of 1. He's my input on the left-hand side of the equation. On the right-hand side of the equation, I have my x value of 68. I have my mean, that's unknown, and then I have my standard deviation of 7. So I'm going to go ahead and type this in my calculator. My calculator will tell me the, score, the corresponding z-score on the left-hand side. So I've got probability, distributions. Oops. Sometimes it goes too fast. Okay, three for inverse norm. And if you'll notice, this is such a common practice that the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one is already in there. So we're going to just type this in. And we're going to get negative 0 0.467699. And then it becomes super easy to solve something like this. Assuming you don't fit in too many eights like I just did. Hey. Okay, you just multiply both sides by that seven. Okay, so you would get negative 3.27. <clears throat> I'm going to subtract 68. Okay, 71, negative 71.27. Two seven negative mean divide both sides by negative one and I get a mean of 71.27 kilograms okay that is the unknown mean that we were looking for so that's how you use these scores to standardize and find um, an unknown theta or an unknown mean in a problem have a good day okay an entire class just came in silently while I was making this video and I'm very proud of them five